Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Chase on Two Wheels here, and in front of me I have a 2023 Indian FTR R Carbon. This is the Mac Daddy version of Indian's FTR, and today we are doing a first ride on it. So yeah, guys, uh, I don't know if we categorize this thing as a naked or what, but we'll get into that in this video. But this thing should be an absolute hoot. It's a first try. Let's see what it looks like and let's see what it sounds like. Alright guys, that's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like. Now this video is not sponsored, but it is supported by our website, wbrgarage.com, where we are currently building a 2018 Yamaha R6, and we're going to give it away. If you guys want to win it, you can either grab a membership or some merch on the site. We got shirts, hoodies, hats, all that kind of good stuff. The website will automatically get your entries contabulated, and when we get done building the motorcycle, you might just have yourself a new addition to the garage. So that'll be a top link down below. Any of you guys that are supporting us over there massive shout out to you guys thanks so much it super supports the channel with all that being said my friends we have the carbonar carbonara sounds italian <laughs> let's get this bike uh cranked up actually let me let me pop my my quad lock on first boom phone secure it looks like we got a really low seat height on this thing you guys know i love the naked space and i think this is a naked bike i'm not really sure but you guys know I'm excited about this one. Kickstands up, throttle on, or bike on. Throttle on will be soon. That startup screen takes way too long. <laughs> it's still going. It's still going. Oh, we just got a black screen now. Well, we're just gonna wait here. Don't cut this, Bo. We have to sit here and wait for this, okay? Boom. Now we're on screen. All righty, guys. So we're here on the 2023 Indian FTR R Carbon. I am 5'10". I got a 32-inch inseam, and I do have bent legs on this motorcycle. So if you're an average-sized rider, I think you're going to be fantastic on this thing. We'll see how it feels for um, taller riders. Uh, now, before we get going, let's go over the modes real quick. If we push that button, we have Rain, Standard, and Sport. And then I guess you guys can see that little green button. We can change the traction control. So uh, we, are, we will start out in rain. And from what I understand, that is the only way to change the modes. Is using the touch screen. And as you guys could tell, there is a touch screen here. Okay, I think we are good to go. So... Uh, let's do that. Also, if you guys are looking for a Discord community to be hanging out with, you clearly like motorcycles. We conveniently have a motorcycle Discord set up that you guys can check out. I'll have a link in the description for that as well. It's totally free and you can hang out with other motorcycle, uh, motorcycle fans. It's a good time. And let's go! Rain mode on the FTRR Carbon. Don't kill me, man. Whoa, man, rain mode slows you way down. 
Oh my goodness. Alrighty guys, we are here on Indians FTR R Carbon. They're big old fancy boy. This thing is I'm pretty sure the only like non-cruiser that Indian makes. So I'm fascinated to feel what this bike feels like from a company that has a long history in making cruisers and this bike's not brand new they've been making the ftr for a decent amount of years at this point I, I believe it got introduced like the first one was like what five or six years ago or something like that i'll put the date here of the first one and this is kind of based on uh indians flat tracking stuff which is kind of neat you guys know we did a flat tracker recently on uh, WBR Garage, so it's uh, I'm, I, I understand that space. <laughs> All right, FTR, you got a lot to live up to. Indians got some pretty solid motorcycles in their fleet, but they don't got none of them that look just like you. You are the unique, uh, <laughs> the black sheep of the Indian family. <laughs> oh man, this first ride should be fun. <laughs> All right, guys, this is the first ride. Let's uh, talk about body position real quick. Uh, we've got a decently wide seat going on here. My back is upright, slight lean forward. My arms are draped down on the handlebars here. My lower half is tucked in a little bit, but I still find this positioning really, uh, really comfortable. I think if you guys are used to naked bikes, you will be very familiar with this setup. I, I feel like I can have a lot of fun in here. I feel like I've got a lot of control over the bike from where I am. And I, I like this a lot. I will say the seat towards the front seems a little hard. But yeah, guys, overall, super comfortable position. Fantastic body position if you're going to be doing, you know, maybe a lot of city riding or something like that. And even with my legs tucked up, tucked up a little bit, very easily to get to the ground. Love that. All right, uh, let's get out of rain mode, shall we? I, I want to try this thing in standard mode. Rain mode, I will say, you know, we, we, are, uh, we got this bike on loan for a week or so from Indian. Uh, shout out to Indian. So I've been riding it around a little bit. And to be honest, that was the first time I put it in rain mode. And that was incredibly different than uh, when I've been riding it in standard and sport mode. So that's, that's fascinating. Rain mode does a really good job of toning the bike down. Toning it down, let's, speaking of that, power-wise, we're looking at a 1,203cc uh, V-twin that is putting out 120 horsepower and, I believe, 87 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, price compared to its competitors, uh, around the same price as an MT-10 SP. MT-10 SP, I think the horsepower is around 160, and uh, I think it's relatively the same uh, torque as this motorcycle so uh, a little underpowered compared to something like an mt10 it's a 1200 cc it's got the power it's not uh, i don't want to use the word underpowered uh with this bike so guys with city riding uh you know i talked about that body position being good for city riding so far just riding it around town i feel like that might be this bike's sweet spot handlebars make this bike very easily controlled I can get in the lane super simply. This bike, especially if you're looking at it as compared to something like a cruiser, I think you're going to be shocked, especially with this being the carbon package. Uh, it's got all the carbon bits. You guys can see the carbon everywhere. That is going to lower the weight of this motorcycle, so it's even more flicky. You got less weight to push side to side. And I will say the balance of this bike is pretty great. I've been able to get going relatively slow on it. And I, you know, I can like maintain that balance without having to put my feet down. You guys know that's my favorite game to play. Uh, and yes, if you guys are curious, we do now have a brand new road on the first rider out and it is somehow bumpier than it was previously. How they did that, I, I'm not really sure. I will say in standard mode, it puts that power down pretty controllably. I, I'm pretty happy about that. Very tame, very, uh, I mean, a good punch of power, but very tame delivery on it. Uh, as you guys saw, we do have traction control on this bike. Bike's got full rider aids, so you guys are gonna have rider aids helping you out with this thing. Um, other than a quick shifter, and it does not have a steering damper, which we'll talk about later, but surprised with uh, no quick shifter on this bike at least the R model. One of the things I am noticing uh, here in the city, the clutch work on this bike does seem a little vague. I don't have any specific locations where 
I feel like I can... Oh, well, this person's not going to get to go. I'm going to skip this line because I'm a motorcyclist and I can. Uh, yeah, but guys, going really slow and just kind of like working the clutch in city uh, environments, I do wish the clutch had a, a more pronounced friction zone because it's kind of vague. I just pull it in a little bit and I, I kind of like, you know, work it out, but I want more feeling there. Let's get this thing uh, leaned over and let's... Oh, that's where I want the quick shifter. That's where I want the quick shifter to rent. This bike would be so cool with a quick shifter. I'm not really sure why they didn't include that. Whatevsies. All right, so this is where that sweet spot is. Just kind of like flowing with traffic in the city. I don't really like the really low speed. The balance is fine. The power is great. But that clutch messes me up because I don't have that fine tunement. But up here, where I don't have to worry about the clutch too much, this is where this bike really comes into its own. I like this. I also like the ability to pop the power when needed. Now's where I wish I had more power though, so we need to get this thing in a different mode. So, uh, and we're coming up on the highway anyway, so let's get it into sport mode. Boopity boop, we'll keep traction control on so we stay alive. I really do not like engaging with the touch screen while riding. That I'm not a huge fan of. But this bike has a decent amount of power. This highway entrance should be fun. Let's see how this goes. We got 1,203 cc's of V Twin Fury to see what it'll do getting to 40 to 80, or going from 40 to 80. All right, guys, 40 to 80 pull. This is a 40 to 80 pull on a 2023 Indian FTR R Carbon brought to you by our lovely people over at Law Tigers. Trying to make sure I don't get hit. We're going to go from 40 to 80 as fast as possible, and I think we need to be in third gear. Hopefully, I stop at 80, but if not, I got Law Tigers on my back. All right, boys, on your mark. I got to let those cars get out some. On your mark. Get set. Go. Oh, it's picking up. Oh, it's picking up. Holy shit. Woo! <laughs> My goodness. You don't think a V Twin's going to hit high up in the revs, and you are wrong. That was awesome. Man, don't mess around with this bike at 5,000, 6,000 RPM. You think it's over? It ain't. Alrighty, guys, we are here on the highway with the FTR R Carbon. Lots of R's on this motorcycle. So we are on a semi-naked motorcycle. We don't have a lot of wind protection, so I'm kind of curious how this thing's going to go. So far, as far as the wind goes, the wind's not really bad. Uh, I obviously I'm getting wind over my entire chest and helmet. But with the wind coming on universally, it, it's almost like it, the wind is predictable. So I got one hand on the throttle, and I just kind of lean into the wind, and it kind of holds me up, which is cool. We are on the highway. We're going, what is that, 4,500 RPMs, going about 75 miles an hour. Very minimal uh, vibrating here on the highway. So we have, like, this kind of overdrive gear. We can just put it in there. Now, when you get this bike cranked up, it is a V-twin. It does uh, vibrate a little bit. I don't think it's anything like that's going to be a real negative factor unless you get it above 6,000 RPMs. If you get this bike above 6,000 RPMs, it is a massage chair. It just starts vibrating you all over the place. Not a huge fan of that, but luckily you can just be chilling. Most of us are going to be chilling at 75 on the highway if you're commuting anyway. Now, stability on the highway very stable i'm not wiggling a lot but if my handlebars start getting side to side that lack of a steering damper it can get a little sketchy so the whole bike starts wiggling there that'll get you into a speed wobble really fast so while the bike does feel stable on the highway you know i'm not going anywhere be careful of that we do have cruise control on this bike it's a press in and press down cruise control is set now the big test, can we throttle forward to cancel? We can, awesome, all right, that is a damn near requirement for me these days. 
Alrighty guys, highway's pretty solid. I, I'm I, honestly surprised. Major uh, issue is without a steering damper and the wiggling that it can happen at higher speeds. So guys, I'm gonna be cruising down the highway. I'm gonna get some music turned on. We're gonna do a little montage while we finish up this highway section. So, uh, Cardo, if you could play a montage for me, that would be great. love a good highway montage i gotta be honest this thing is surprising me over 5,000 rpm even on the highway so now we know it's got the power but what does it feel like leaned over that's that's what all the kids want to know that's what i want to know as we run straight into that atlantic truck Uh, a little too good on the lean. Yeah, it ran pretty close into that truck. So, uh, Olin suspension, front and rear, and adjustable on the FTR are carbon here. Feeling fantastic so far. Bikes felt like locked onto the road. And with an adjustable suspension from Olin, you can literally make this bike feel however you want it to feel. The only thing you could get better would be electronic suspension, which something like the MT-10 SP has but I don't think anybody's gonna be complaining when they see that gold Olin's on their suspension for their motorcycle. Alrighty guys, uh, let's talk about the power delivery on this bike. As I said, 120 horsepower, 87 foot-pounds of torque. You've got ample power to play with. This bike has been fantastic power-wise. It lays it down really strongly. Uh, it's very cruisery too. It's like just thrusting you forward. I think if you guys are used to cruiser power, you're going to really dig this bike. Uh, transmission wise, you know, I really, I think this bike would benefit an incredible amount if uh, Indian gave it a quick shifter. It's light, it's flicky, it's powerful. People that are used to motorcycles like that, I think want quick shifters, or at least I do. And I honestly think that was a big opportunity missed by Indian on the FTRR Carbon. All right, so before I get to some of the other things I want to hit on, uh, let's talk about the other things that are good. I, I do have an issue with this bike I need to figure out. Uh, let's talk about the brakes. We got Brembo uh, master cylinder up front, Brembo levers, Brembo brakes. Uh, on the way to from picking this bike up, I was going through traffic and I had multiple situations where uh, people are blind and did not see me and I had to very much use the brakes I can definitely say nobody's gonna need more brakes than this bike has I mean like it's got Brembo's and a master cylinder up front you're not gonna have a problem they have a great feel they're strong they come on well it makes you feel really good to push the motorcycle when you've got brakes uh, that strong behind you. So let's go to the throttling real quick because I do have an issue with this motorcycle. When I am just constantly holding the throttle in sport mode and in standard mode, I haven't really ridden enough in rain mode to know, but when I'm just regularly cruising on this bike, I've noticed that when I hold the throttling very consistently, the bike will start to oscillate going forward and then dropping back and going forward and dropping back. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I've kind of been like pushing the throttle and then letting the throttle go. I haven't done a lot of constant throttling in this video, but all the other riding that I've been doing, testing this bike out, I've done, been doing that. And the throttling is very strange. And to be honest, it does ruin the uh, confidence I have in this bike. I, I will maintain a constant throttle, right? And I, I do this on all motorcycles, so it's not like I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm holding a constant throttle, and if I sit there for a second and I keep the same RPM, same gearing, I don't shift, the bike will start doing this oscillating forward, that, or oscillating period, that oscillation will lead to me doing that like my body doing that which leads to my arm doing that and then i start oscillating the throttle more 
and it kind of it, it just gets so unsettled the way i end up riding this motorcycle which i've literally never done on any other motorcycle is i have to put my hand on the uh bar end as a stability factor and i end up using the throttle with these two fingers and my thumb that has been the most consistent way i can ride that is smooth now that even happens like in turns if you're at constant throttle i haven't really noticed it when you're throttling up or deselling it's only when you're constant on the throttle and it is i mean guys I, i've ridden almost a hundred bikes at this point you know i've been doing first rides for like eight years i don't know if i've ever felt a motorcycle feel like this one does with the throttling it is the strangest thing I don't know if this is a one-off unit that has that issue or or if this bike in general has that uh it's really weird I had to get that out there because it has it's just been really strange as I've been testing the bike out all right so guys let's talk about the cluster up here uh first off with the grips we got a really interesting grips like a little checkerboard pattern which is part of the Indian branding. They work really well. I've got a firm grip on these things. They're fantastic. We do have blacked out levers. I talked about the Brembo front master cylinder. Love that. Love the feel that I'm getting out of the Brembo master. I already talked about the throttling or the, you know, the fueling, whatever the throttle is controlling. Something's weird in there. Uh, the clutch, I already talked about that as well. I, I don't get a lot of feeling in that clutch and I'm it's just this vague pull in and let out, which makes it to where I feel like I can't ride this motorcycle really precisely, uh, which I like riding bikes like that. I want my bike to be this precision instrument. And between the throttling being kind of strange and the clutch being vague, those make it to where I don't have the ability to ride this thing uh, precisely. Not a huge fan of that. Uh, buttons wise, the buttons look okay. They don't look anything like crazy polished, which for a bike that's 17 grand, I do wish they had a little better feel. Uh, I, I get feedback from them, but I don't get like $17,000 feedback. I get like $10,000 feedback, if, if that makes sense. Now the touch screen, fantastic. Uh, the only issue I really have with the touch screen is actually right here. I can't see it at all. <laughs> uh, it needs a little better anti-glare or something like that. It is a little too easy to get the dash in a position where I can't really see it. Uh, with the dash, you do get this kind of simplified option and you can swipe it and get that option. I think I tend to prefer that option. And I do like that you got two options. The user interface on this bike is not as user friendly as I would expect it to be. There's been times where I get a little confused going through the menus and stuff like that. So I think Indian has some uh, room to get a little better with their UI. Um, it just, it's not intuitive what I do when I hit these buttons and stuff. I would, so up and down changes the screen, but what's left and right do? Left and right doesn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, it's connect my device. Well, I don't want to do that. How do we get out of that? Okay. I don't know. It's a little strange. I wish it was more intuitive. There's other brands that do that better. I got this button over here that changes dash as well. GPS is enabled. That's a really cool thing. So the bike has a lot going for it, but I just think it could be laid out a little simpler. And obviously I started this video showing you guys how long this bike takes to turn on. Now you can turn the bike on and crank it up, but you have to wait for the screen to basically initialize and load. And I, I'm not a huge fan of that. So, you know, we were talking about that uh, clutch lever and being really vague and the engine kind of doing this weird dying when you start going off. So I actually uh, stalled this bike in the middle of traffic uh, one time. And, you know, just like if you don't have feeling and you're brand new on a bike, it happens, it's not a big deal. But because of that and now i have to turn the like i have to get the bike cranked back up the screen reset so i'm like i just cranked the bike up and ride off and i'm riding off with a black screen for a little while it was just a weird experience that i i haven't felt very often with a motorcycle so you know i try to share my experiences with you guys so that was kind of weird 
Uh, so guys, we're going to pull over here and uh, do a little walk around of the Indian FTR. It is a phenomenal looking motorcycle. You guys have seen that in all the camera car footage, but I want to show it to you as well. Also, the kickstand does a super weird thing. I want to show you guys before I put the bike down. All right, kickstand's down, right? And then it does this extra push down. I cannot tell you guys how many times I've thought I'm dropping this beautiful carbon motorcycle when it just does its little lock-in-place thing. But anyways, guys, this is our 2023 Indian FTR R Carbon. I have to say, the tail on this bike and how it has these lines and angles and little cutouts, I think it might be one of the coolest tails on any bike on the market right now. I am totally down for that. I don't even care that the exhaust headers are kind of like in your face. The exhaust doesn't look bad. I'm sure you could get a much better exhaust. I would love like a low mounted exhaust to, so you could really show off that Olin's uh, rear damper. Uh, that would be really cool. I think it would really like tie the look in. Love the Olin's uh, suspension up front. And I, th I think it's a fantastic look. It's uh, it's kind of minimal too, right? Like, Indian's got that beautiful engine in there. It's wrapped in that trellis frame. Oh, check this out. The swing arm is actually tubular. So that super unique look. Uh, you do not see that on many bikes these days. So love seeing, like, super unique characteristics like that. Uh, and if you guys have watched my videos uh, consistently, you guys know... Whatever the metal is that Indian uses in their engines, I think it's fantastic. It literally has, like, pearlescent in it. The bike has a fantastic look. Uh, I don't think, uh, I mean, you know, some people are subjective and won't like it, but I think the bike looks really cool. Even with, like, the low line, you know, typically in a motorcycle, you got the big gas tank. They've kind of lowered it all the way down. I will say, this bike runs through a tank of gas super fast. Now, I don't know if that's because I ride like an idiot or because it just, like, the fueling is uh, high. Is that a thing? It runs through gas quickly. That's all you need to know. Um, overall, though, I absolutely love the looks of this bike. All right, guys, I'm going to grab my phone off that quad lock, and I'm going to do some vertical content for our fans over on TikTok and Instagram. If you guys aren't following us, we're at Chase on Two Wheels on TikTok, and we're at c 2 Picks on Instagram. You should go check it out if you haven't already. So, shout out to quad lock. Discount in the description. You guys know what's up. You're welcome. All right, guys, that is it for my vertical content. Boom, quad lock on. Let's do a steering stem lock test. And talk about who this bike is for, because I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> Good God, that is too long. All right, steering stem is locked. We are in first gear. We are slowly letting out our semi-pointless clutch. You know, not the worst naked I've ever uh, done a steering stem lock test on. Certainly not the best though. All right, guys, let's start off with purchase or pass, and then we'll go into uh, who this bike is for. Purchase or pass for me for 17 grand for this bike, no shot. Uh, I, am, I am pass all day, every day. Now, now let's talk about who this bike is for. I think this bike is very cool. This bike is very powerful. It's very neat. But for this kind of price tag, the competitors that people should be thinking of, which is similar motorcycles, which are powerful, upright, light motorcycles that have lots of tech. My one, com my, com my competitor that I keep going to is the MT-10 SP. I don't know why. It's probably because I have one in the shop and it's the exact same price point and it has a lot of the same technology that this bike has. This motorcycle, the best way I can describe it is... A, a naked motorcycle made by a cruiser company. You can tell that there is a lack of overall precision with this bike. And that precision and the bike doing exactly what you want the bike to do when you ask it to do that is what leads you as a rider to have a lot of confidence with a motorcycle, which allows you to ride it very well you know like aggressively like i can I, I would not want to take this thing to the mountains actually i take that back i would be terrified to take this thing to the mountains with the clutch feeling like it is with the uh throttling oscillating like it does there is no way 
I could ride this thing spiritedly in the way that I would want to ride it. And that's before I compare it to the MT-10 SP. Like this naked market, which this bike is a naked bike. Regardless of who makes it, this is a minimally fared high horsepower motorcycle that your, it has an upright seating position. It literally has all of the defining characteristics of a naked bike. And you guys know the naked bike sector has been popping off for years now. And that has led to us as the consumer having some absolutely phenomenal motorcycles in the market that we can ride. So when you take a motorcycle like this and you try to put it in a space where it's just got a ton of competition at a high price point, bro, it has to be incredibly unique or it has to it, it, it has to perform ungodly. I, I do think this bike is a unique motorcycle, but I, I don't think it performs anywhere close to where it needs to. It's got fun power to make you go forward, but if you go too fast and don't have a steering damper and you're going to start getting wiggling in the handlebars, if you're just kind of riding normally at a consistent speed, you're going to have an oscillating throttle that's really going to throw you off. I think if they gave me a steering damper to, to make it more controlled going at high speeds, I think if they gave me an actual good clutch and not a clutch that come, feels like it comes out of some like cruiser where it doesn't matter you know and i don't need precision and uh and fix the throttling issue they would have an absolutely incredible motorcycle but the motorcycle that i'm riding right now i, I it's just not doing it for me at all hopefully that helped you guys out i know that i'm typically pretty positive on videos but if a bike gives me an off vibe that's my job is to tell you guys that right and that hopefully you guys found that info helpful and uh guys i'm chase on two wheels i appreciate you riding with me in this video a uh, shout out to indian for letting me borrow the bike i will say there are indian motorcycles that i think are absolutely fantastic right i don't think the brand is bad this bike just didn't do it for me and the one i rode like five years ago that one did it for me so i don't know what happened in between oh now we're stuck in neutral <laughs> good lord <laughs> all right guys that's it for the indian ftr r carbon shout out to indian again thank you so much uh we're not gonna have this one long we're not gonna be able to do the long-term loader on this one but maybe in a future indian we can get one a little longer uh, i would love to get more seat time on some indians uh, but guys, I'm Chase on Twills. Make sure to subscribe for more First Ride videos. And you guys let me know. You're at the end of the video. Put OC in your comment. Let me know what you think about this thing. Because I feel like either I'm missing something or maybe this bike is just off. Let me know if you've ever ridden one of the 2023 models in the comments down below. And, uh, you know, obviously don't forget to like and subscribe. You guys are awesome. You guys go out there and ride safe. And uh, just for comparison's sake, here at the end of the video, I'll leave the MT-10 SP first ride. I'll see you guys on the next video. Later.